Good afternoon, students of Summit University. This time I would like to introduce you to our first speaker at this afternoon's session, Mrs. Mary Ellen Mons. Mrs. Mons received her Montessori Preschool Certificate from the Association Montessori International's Montessori Institute of Los Angeles in 1972. Mrs. Mons joined the faculty of Montessori International in Colorado Springs, Colorado in 1972 and taught preschool for two years in our church-sponsored Montessori school. Mrs. Mons received her Montessori elementary training from the International Center for Montessori Studies in Bergamo, Italy in 1975. In 1976, she returned to the United States and taught grades 1 to 3 in Bethesda, Maryland. In 1977, she rejoined the faculty of Montessori International at Pasadena, California, where she taught for two years. In 1978, Mrs. Mons received a certificate in the pastoral care of children according to the principles of the Montessori method from the Institutes of Religion in Houston, Texas. In 1978, she also took over the position of preschool administrator at Montessori International in Malibu, California, the headquarters of Church Universal and Triumphant. She held this position until 1984. She studied Montessori infant-toddler development under Dr. Silvana Montanero in a 10-day course in Tarrytown, New York, in 1979. From 1980 through 1983, Mrs. Mounts was personally trained by Dr. Elizabeth Caspari, student and friend of Maria Montessori and co-founder of the Pan American Montessori Society. Mrs. Mons was awarded her master teacher credential after giving seven teacher training courses with Dr. Caspari. Mrs. Mons trained teachers in Savannah, Georgia in 1984 for the United Way Agency and conducted a preschool class and a teacher training course in Murrieta, California in 1987. The same year, she received her Bachelor of Science degree in child development from the University of Laverne at Laverne, California. She became elementary administrator of Montessori International at our Montana ranch in 1988, a position she still holds. Mrs. Mons taught sixth grade for two years. She was co-director of Montessori International teacher training courses from 1980 to 1984 and has been in that role from 1988 until the present. Mrs. Mons sits on the board of directors of the Montessori Accreditation Council for Teacher Education, which is the umbrella organization created to accredit all Montessori teacher training courses in the United States. She has lectured widely at high schools and colleges in Southern California, at American Montessori Society conferences, and at selected cities around the country, as well as here at Summit University at the Royal Teton Ranch in Montana. She has had several magazine articles published on Montessori education. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you my longtime friend and colleague, Mrs. Mary Ellen Mons. My topic this afternoon is the spiritual preparation of the teacher. It's my great privilege to be here today, and I wish to thank you, Mother, for this wonderful opportunity to share the profound teachings of beloved Maria Montessori, now the Ascended Lady Master, who gave us such remarkable keys, simple yet deeply moving, to enable us to clearly see the child in a new light, and by so doing, to also see ourselves in a new light. Some of you will leave here and go out and work with children. Others of you will not. But we all teach in some way. And indeed, the Ascended Masters have called us all to teach. 
What is a teacher? Mother gave us the definition in a lecture delivered to Summit University on February 18, 1980. She said, the definition of the educator is the one who unlocks the flame of the heart. We know that to teach, we have to first become the teaching. If we would unlock the heart of the little child, we too must be in the process of unlocking our own heart. It is truly more than an academic preparation. In order to understand the spiritual preparation of the teacher, as Maria Montessori outlined it for us, it's essential that we look first at the conception of education that she gave to us. It is an education that when the world first found out about it, it was called the revelation of the soul. Montessori herself calls it help to life. In response to the question, what is the Montessori method, Dr. Montessori wrote, if we eliminate not only the name method, but also its common conception, things would become much clearer. For the word method, we should substitute something like this. Help given in order that the human personality may achieve its independence the defense of the child, the scientific recognition of his nature, the social proclamation of his rights must replace the piecemeal ways of conceiving of education. The results that Maria Montessori first obtained in her schools in the early 1900s have been replicated in schools the world over for the past 85 years. The results, the revelation of new and finer characteristics within the child, keep occurring because Montessori's work is based on principles. Principles that work. She tells us that the problems of education must be solved on the basis of the laws of cosmic order and that respect for these laws is indeed fundamental. It is precisely because the principles she discovered are based on the inner law that they have worked and continue to work. In Dr. Montessori's book, The Child in the Church, she writes, to discover the laws of the child's development would be the same thing as to discover the spirit and wisdom of God operating in the child. This is the true mentality for the educator. That is the recognition of the divine wisdom as a necessary element in his work as an educator. To look away from these laws would mean to lose that direction which God, as the guide of the child, has given to us. And sadly enough, the world has indeed looked away from these laws. Let us not be any longer guilty of looking away. So the first step in the spiritual preparation of the teacher is the willingness to include God in the equation. God and his representatives are our true teachers. Second only to this recognition of God's role in our work, a profound change of heart, a change in attitude towards the child is necessary. We must develop a new respect for the child, a deeper understanding of his dignity as a person, and a new appreciation of the significance of his development that occurs through his freely chosen work. We would develop a reverence for the child as the creator of the adult to be. As the poet William Wordsworth said, the child is the father of the man. How does one develop this new attitude, this change of heart deep enough to truly change our behavior? It is not done through study alone, 
says Dr. Montessori, but through a process she calls initiation. She writes, We insist on the fact that a teacher must prepare himself interiorly by studying himself so that he can tear out his most deeply rooted defects, those, in fact, which impede his relations with children. In order to discover these subconscious failings, we have need of a special kind of instruction. We must see ourselves as another sees us. This is equivalent to saying that a teacher must be initiated. This does not mean that we all have to become spiritually perfect before we teach. If we did, education would close down. But it reminds us of the biblical injunction to first remove the beam from our own eye in order to more clearly see to remove the mote from the child's eye. It directs us to the fact that Montessori said there are two specific areas within ourselves that we need to work on in relationship to children, and those sins are pride and anger. Now, in our social interactions with adults, we get feedback. Those manifestations of pride and anger are curbed, are checked. That outward conformity to social standards is indeed one of two ways of dealing with our negative tendencies. Although Montessori notes that we don't respond to social pressures with the same purity of heart with which we obey God. The second way to curb our negative tendencies is to go after them directly and to replace them with their opposite tendencies. In this case, the qualities of humility and patience. We'll speak more of those virtues a little later. How does this conformity to social pressures work when we're dealing with a child? Teachers often work alone, behind closed doors, with no one but the children as witness to their actions. There is no external check to their behavior. Adults who have no check on their behavior can easily become tyrants. Montessori says, now a person in a position of undisputed authority, free from all criticism, is in great danger of becoming a tyrant. The next stage will be that he comes to claim this undisputed authority as his right, and will regard any offense against it, ipso facto, facto as a crime. Many teachers indeed do unconsciously come to regard themselves and their authority in this light, she says, claiming dictatorial authority over the child. Respect is now paid only from one side, the weak to the strong. Any offense on the part of the teacher is acceptable. He can judge the child unfavorably, speak ill of him before others, even going so far as to strike him. But any protest on the part of the child, which in ma many cases is a vital defense of his own psychic integrity, is considered as insubordination, not to be tolerated. We know this is true, not only in the classroom, but in many homes as well. Tyranny defies discussion, says Maria Montessori. It surrounds the individual with the impenetrable walls of recognized authority. An adult to a child is divinity itself. He is simply beyond discussion. Children do not understand our irritation, our anger, our pride. They cannot defend themselves against us. They not only accept abuse, they blame themselves. I understood just how deep this goes when a number of years ago I was doing some research on child abuse and I visited a hospital where children who had been abused were taken. The director of the hospital showed me around. 
I saw a little child, about 14 months old. He had 16 bones broken in his body. I saw a little child who had wet his pants one time too often and had been dipped in boiling water. Yet these children, as soon as they're well, they want to go home to mommy and daddy who did it to them. The child does not